Today I have the ultimate tiny drone comparison. I have the Hover Air X1 versus the DJI Neo. These two drones are well under 250 grams. They are minuscule little drones and you can fly both of them without a controller. You can literally operate a bunch of different flight modes purely with the buttons that are built into the drone's body. What's going on guys? My name is Dan Davis and I'm a creative director here on danstube.tv. I'm also the course creator over on the Fearless Drone Academy, which is the ultimate online drone course for beginners. So I'm giving away a DJI Neo to one lucky student through the Fearless Drone Academy. There will be a link below, click on that. You'll save 50% off the course. And if you sign up using that code to the course, you'll go into a draw to win the DJI Neo. It's gonna be a very limited exclusive offer. When you think about it, there's only gonna be a handful of people that will sign up. So you have a very good chance of winning a brand new drone. Check that link below. Let's get into those finer details between the Hover Air X1 and the Neo. What makes them unique? What makes them similar? And what do we have going on here? So you can see that they are remarkable similar when it comes to their footprint. Similar kind of width, similar kind of height. But the thing that's very unique here is with the Hover Air X1, it can fold away like so. The Neo is a fixed design. Now, I think that this trade-off is well worth it because the build quality of the Neo feels a lot more premium. You do get a gimbal cover or the Neo, where with the Hover Air, yes, it can fold away, but there's no protection for the camera system. So for me, with the Hover Air, I actually got myself this case here. And this is the official hover case for the X1. X1, you can put the drone in there and protect it. But the thing that is unique about this guy is it does fold into a smaller footprint and that is something that you can slot into your pocket. The Neo will fit into your pocket and it does have a gimbal cover, but it's just more of a fixed design. In terms of the plastics that have been used here, it feels like more of a harder plastic shell. And I have crashed the Neo a few times when I've flown it in full FPV mode and it handles it like a champion. There's nothing on it, no dents, no damage. With the X1, for example, you don't have any of the extra control and additional options that I will mention later in the video. And the build quality of it does definitely feel a little bit cheaper, a little bit more flimsy. It still is a well-built drone, but it's like a thinner plastic they've gone with to protect the propellers. Not a major issue here because with the X1, you're not gonna be flying it in more extreme conditions like you can with the Neo. So I think that that trade-off for the lighter weight isn't a huge issue for the Hover Air X1, but I will say the Neo definitely has a significantly more premium heavy duty build to it. Now keep in mind, they both have the option to be able to use them without a controller. So there's a bunch of different menus and buttons that you can use and you can switch between the different modes and literally just hold it out like so, it will launch and follow you. That's where the Hover Air X1 is kind of limited to. You can't really control it in any other way. You can go through the app and you have some manual control through there to be able to control it. I would not recommend doing that for most situations though, but in terms of what it's offering, which is purely just a drone without a controller that will just follow you and do all sorts of maneuvers and modes, it does a great job. It does exactly what you would expect it to do. Keep in mind, the Hover Air X1 can capture 2.7K video where the Neo can capture 4K video. It is a half inch sensor on the Neo. It can capture 12 megapixel stills. It definitely is the better camera system here. Really love what they've done for the camera. It's nice and lightweight in there. It's got some protection around the side. So when you are flying FPV, it's nice and protected. The propellers are nice. You can remove them pretty easily. And I'd imagine there'd be all sorts of things that you can do in terms of replacing in terms of third-party add-ons and whatnot. I think I prefer the sturdiness of the Neo purely because you have a lot more functionality here. But what I love about the X1 is this light on the front. The light on the X1 definitely does make a difference in terms of your overall experience with it, purely because when you're looking at it, you can see that light clearly. You know exactly what mode it's in. Plus it also like alerts your eyes to look in that general direction, which is where the camera is, right? So that's really clean. And I find that to be a nice benefit of the design here. But when we look at the Neo, for example, it basically has the lights on top. So it will let us know on top what mode it's in, what record, you know, if it's recording, what it's doing. Both of them will narrate to you. So they'll let you know, yeah, we're running low on battery. They'll let you know what mode you're in. So they both make it work. But I think the X1's design to have the light on the front is actually something that is beneficial. The flight performance of both of these is quite similar when it comes to just purely using them without a controller. Remarkable how similar they are in their flight patterns when you're just using it purely 
without a controller. Now do keep in mind that the Neo has better battery life than the X1. So from the tests I did, the X1 couldn't get over the 10 minute mark. It was around the 10 minute mark where the Neo got about 14 minutes. If you are interested in the Neo by DJI, I will have some links below, so make sure to check them out. If you're based in Australia, go over to D1 Store's website, which is DJI Australia, d1store.com.au. Use the code DANCETUBE over there to save on most drones, cameras, and accessories. I will also have some other links below for my international audience. I have a DJI link as well as an Amazon link to check out the Neo. And if you are interested in the Hover Air X1, I will have some links below as well to check out this guy. So check all of those links below to save on whichever drone you're looking to grab. In terms of the modes that they both have available to them, they both have very similar modes. They can do all sorts of like zooming back, zooming up and looking down. They can do follow modes. They can track you, circle modes, whatever you can imagine, whatever you've seen from previous drones, they can pretty much do those modes. Now you can do all of that purely from the drone without a controller, without the app. You can just go between the different modes on the actual interface on the drone. But for the custom profiles, there's a few different extra modes. You have to go into the app and choose that one to then make it available through the drones interface here. So the app adds extra functionality to both of these drones. But in terms of just its experience without any app, without any controller, they can both do a bunch of different features and they're both competent and reliable in every setting that I put both of them through. They both have a wind rating of level four, they can handle just over 28 kilometer winds. Now, when you're flying these without a controller, keep in mind that you are keeping it pretty close. So it's not normally going above a tree line. If you're in an enclosed kind of area, they're flying pretty close to you. So that wind doesn't make a huge difference. And because they're flying really close, like I said, you don't necessarily have to worry about it getting like blown away or having any effect like that, purely because they are very competent and reliable in those close quarter flights. Through the app, there's definitely some differences here. So firstly, with the X1, they've added definitely a bit more personality to their app. There's this little like avatar kind of thing. I think, think it's called Flow. And you progressively unlock different features as you start using the drone. Now, this was something very unique. And I actually really like this, especially because if you're a beginner, you want to start out by just learning some of the basic modes. You don't want to be overwhelmed with everything. So you physically had to use a few different modes before you could unlock some of the more advanced modes. And then finally, you get into the manual controls once you've used everything. And you can use the app to manually control the, the X1. It can't fly too far in that manual mode. It's also very limited because it's like portrait instead of landscape. So it's a bit awkward with the controls, but you do unlock manual mode if you want to like shoot it up a little bit higher and get some different perspectives. So that's really cool. But I loved their take on that experience. The fact that it was like a character that you basically interacted with, you unlock progressively different modes as you start to get used to the drone. I thought that was a really smart take on the drone experience. The other thing I absolutely loved about the X1 is the community tab. So I think they just call it home, but it's basically a community tab where you can see other X1 users using their drone. So it'll let you know what mode they were in. They can write their captions there. You can watch the videos and scroll, or you can just scroll through and choose different ones to click on. You can then just double tap to like a video. You can comment on a video. So There's a really cool community aspect and it's awesome to see other people getting into the drone space. And a lot of people have said that this is their first drone. It's something very unique and fun and there's a social element to it. With the Neo, the app interface was definitely a bit more professional. It didn't have as much of a fun feel as the X1, but a lot of people are okay with that. They just want to grab a drone and fly it. And especially with the Neo, because it's not just purely the hand launching, you can use all sorts of controllers, which I'll get into very soon, to control the Neo. So basically it's a very clean, simplified interface. You can go into all the settings, similar to what you can do with the X1, and you can change all the different distances, the height you want it to follow you from. There's video previews to let you know what you're doing, and everything's unlocked immediately. So you can jump in and customize different modes and play around in the app without having to worry about progressively unlocking things. So that was fine and it was really easy to use the app interface. Keep in mind both of them when they use the manual mode it does have the portrait design so you physically have to hold it like that and control the drone. So both of them are limited in terms of the range so maybe that's a decision there but they both also can use your phone as a voice recorder. So you can have both drones following you and you can hold your phone in your hand and you can get both of them to record audio directly to the video file. So that's really handy and a nice way 
way to narrate whatever it is you're doing or create some sort of like immersive experience. One thing I would love to see from DJI is more of that fun community aspect. They have got something similar, but again, it feels definitely more professional. So maybe in the future they'll consider it, but for something like the Neo, which really is a fun drone, this feels like the most fun that DJI have probably had creating a drone. Cause I think this has got mass appeal to really anyone, whether you've got a drone, whether you've got a high-end drone, whether you've never owned a drone, this can appeal to you because there's so many things you can use it for, which we haven't even got into just yet. But they do have the Academy interface, which is like their version of a community tab. So you can go in there, you can see other people's videos, you can like, you can comment, you can upload your own, and it's really cool. But it definitely has more of a professional feel and it doesn't feel as fun, I wanna say, as social, as the X1's app. So we've spoken about battery life, we've spoken about cameras, we've spoken about the flight experience purely when we're using them like this. Now, we've also spoken about the app, right, in terms of the manual controls and how you can kind of use a controller, kind of, with the X1, but that's where it stops. That's as much functionality as you can have with the X1. Now, the Neo, really excels here. This is where you have so many options. So you can use it purely like this, launch it and it will do its thing. You can use the app as well to control a few other things, but then you have a bunch of other options. So we have the controller. So this is the N3 controller in the Fly More kit and you can get OcuSync 4 with it. So it's got kilometers of range. So you get about 14 minutes of flight time and that means that you can fly it a decent distance away. You still wanna keep it pretty close and also because it doesn't have a strong wind rating as the other drones, I still feel a little hesitant flying this guy too far away purely because it's so tiny doesn't have huge battery life compared to my other drones and I just notice it gets blown around a fair bit in the wind but still it can handle a lot of wind conditions and it's got great range on it so you can actually use this guy in all sorts of scenarios with a controller you can fly it away angle it down get all sorts of perspectives with it and then on top of that you can also use the different FPV options that are available so you can use the goggles 3 you can use the RC motion 3 so those two together give you a very unique RC experience and that works perfectly with the Neo. I've got a whole standalone video on the channel for that guy. And then the other thing you can do is you can use the FPV Remote Controller 3 and get full manual mode. I've got a nut, like the whole video on those two options, the RC Motion and the Remote Controller 3. Unbelievable stuff. That was actually my first ever experience flying FPV, going from a simulator like the Uncrash simulator into the full FPV experience. And I got to do it with the Neo. I got to do it with such a tiny, competent little drone. So you can also control the Neo with your voice. Again, there will be a whole standalone video on that feature. There are a bunch of different ways to control this guy. So that's where it really just takes leaps and bounds above the X1. Both very competent drones, but when you have all of this functionality and all of this control and all of these options, it really makes it hard to compare the two because this guy becomes a fully fledged, full functioning drone outside of just a tiny drone that you can launch from your hand. It becomes something that you can fly for kilometers away from yourself. It, it's something that becomes an FPV drone. It's something that you control with your voice. It's in the ecosystem of DJI. So you've got so many options and that's where the Neo really does stand out here. Now, just a quick side note, I do have the charging hub for both the X1 and the Neo. So if you plug it in, you take a power bank out with you, you can charge all batteries at the same time and that saves a huge amount of time. You don't have to worry for one to fully charge and then it goes to the next one. And with the Neo, you get the hub in the Fly More combo that gives you three batteries. So that's amazing. That just gives you so much more flight time. You can go from location to location with a little power bank charging all batteries and you're ready to go on the fly. And that's actually what I did a lot. I took this out to a bunch of locations, used all three batteries. And meanwhile, while I'm using the second battery, I'm charging the first battery. And then I use the third battery, I'm charging the first and the second battery. And then I jump in the car, I'm charging all three at the same time. By the time I get to the location, at least one or two batteries are ready to go. So you can just keep chaining the batteries and it's a huge benefit of the Neo here. You can do something similar with the X1, but keep in mind that you don't get as much battery life. And with the set that I've got, you just get the two batteries. So if you're getting about 10 minutes, let's say, you get about 20 minutes of flight time, drive to the next location, charge these up and similar premise, but you've just got to keep in mind that the limitations of having about a 10 minute flight time, that just might stop you from getting more out of the X1. If you are interested in the Neo, if it's something that's caught your eye, I do actually have two Facebook groups. I've got a worldwide group and an Australian specific group for the Neo. There'll be a bunch of giveaways. There'll be some events. There'll be all sorts of fun things happening on those two groups. So make sure to follow those links below. If you're in Australia, follow both of them. Make sure you're part of both groups. And if you're purely based worldwide, not in Australia, definitely check out that worldwide group. There'll be a bunch of stuff going on both of those groups. There are definitely some unique things to the X1 and there are some cool things going on here. I do love their unique design.
design. I love the fact that we have the light on the front there. And I love the app interface. That's something that definitely excels, that community vibe. But that's kind of as far as it goes for a recommendation for the X1. It's hard not to just go, the Neo is the one to get, right? Because you look at this guy, there is so much that you can do with it. It still has a social element to it, still has all of the functionality that you can have with the X1, but it's got better battery life. It's got a better camera system. And I didn't even mention earlier on in the video, but when you're using a controller, you get full active track as well. Neither of them have obstacle avoidance, but you can use spotlight, point of interest, and active track. That means that I could have this guy following me. I've got the controller and it's properly in active track, keeping up with me, doing its thing. I can put it in spotlight and then I have manual control while I'm the spotlight. It really does have some extra features here that are quite unique to the Neo and it definitely stands out over the X1. Like I mentioned, there's so many other ways to control it. Honestly, I was not expecting it to have all of this, but it has everything you can imagine and more. The Neo for me is the clear winner. And I know that a lot of people are gonna be obsessed with this. It's great for beginners. It's great for people who already have a high-end drone and they want something fun like this. They're both great traveling drones. They're both great for capturing moments, but the Neo really does have the edge for me here. The X1, like I said, has a few unique offers and it does have the social tab. It does have the light on the front. It's got the folding design. It still is a competent drone. It still has some unique things going on for it. People still do love this, but it's very hard not to recommend the Neo when it has so much more going on for it. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I really do appreciate all the support. Let me know your comments in the comment section below. Let me know what drone you have or what drone you're thinking about getting, and I will chat to you in the next one. Peace.